Hi, my name is Andrew Cunningham. I'm a primary care physician at One Medical Group in San Francisco, and I have a background in family medicine. I'll be going to Anhui, China for two weeks to learn from a traditional Chinese medicine master named Li Jiren. I felt grateful to be walking around with somebody who's really a living legend. Master Li reminds me of a country doctor that we all wish we had. Somebody who really treats you as family. I really aspire to be that type of doctor. Master Li's really still pioneering research and pushing the envelope to help develop the future of traditional Chinese medicine. Master Li lives, works, and continues to teach in this town. Students from all over China come here to study traditional Chinese medicine. And today I had a really great tour of the Yi Ji Sen Hospital in Wuhu, China. This is the hospital where Master Li is working. He seems like quite a famous doctor. I feel like every building that I've gone in, there's a plaque with pictures of him speaking to famous politicians and other important people. I was able to meet one of Master Li's daughters, Li Yin, who was seeing patients on a pretty busy pace today. She doesn't even use an exam table. Most of her diagnosis is done through pulse. A sensitive Chinese medicine doctor can really get a lot of information by using their fingertips to get the pulse. It's not supernatural in any way. They go through a lot of training in medical school to learn how to use these pulses. And she didn't use a stethoscope to listen to their heart and lungs and really do much besides just her fingertips and observation of the tongue and the overall patient vitality. I finally met Master Lee today. He carries a really positive energy and his smile is infectious. In our first conversation, he explained to me how he came to be called Lee Ji Ren, which means using a kind heart to save the world. You're living your name. <laughs> Knowing that he's such an important teacher to many people, I asked him who his teacher was. Uh as you might imagine from a typical master in China, he even told me about lessons learned from Confucius. We walked from his office to the area where we went to see patients together. He immediately included me in the learning of the team of doctors that he took around seeing patients. The first patient we saw had what we call a TIA, or a mini stroke, and that gave Master Lee an opportunity to teach me a little bit more about pulse diagnosis. He explained to me that pulse can be described as fast, slow, heavy or floating. Standing next to Master Li reminded me of standing next to some of the best teachers I've had in medicine. He was really persistent in wanting me to understand the finer points of diagnosis that he was teaching me. I feel really grateful knowing that this very famous doctor has taken time out of his schedule to teach me. Even spending only one day with him so far makes me understand that he's a really good mentor and I'm gonna learn everything I can from him while I have the opportunity to be here. I 
had a chance to spend some time with Master Lee learning about herbs and some of his practices. We started off the day at the Medical School Museum where they have a lot of different plant specimens that he was able to teach me about. One of the first things we saw when we walked into the museum was a sculpture that had several of the most important acupuncture points. Master Lee told me that he learned on a similar model and that that model of teaching dates back to the Ming Dynasty. Next we walked into a room where there were hundreds of plant specimens preserved either dried or in jars of the fresh above ground plant parts in some sort of preservative. The first herb that Master Lee pointed out to me was cordyceps. The Chinese name for it is winter worm, summer grass, which describes the life cycle of the organism. Cordyceps is a widely treasured Eastern medicine remedy, and Master Lee told me that he actually takes it himself. I was excited to ask Master Lee some questions about astragalus, which is a Chinese herb that I've actually grown in my garden and commonly recommend to patients with depleted immune systems. Another one of my favorite Chinese remedies is Ling Zhu, also known as the Reishi mushroom. Reishi mushroom use dates back thousands of years, and you'll find it also popular in Japan, China, and now increasingly popular in America. Reishi mushroom is popular for cancer treatment, actually, something that it's not really used for in America. One of the more controversial topics in modern botanical medicine is the use of animal parts. Master Lee told me that he does use animal parts in his formulas, and he explained to me a tortoise shell goes into some of the formulas he uses. So Master Lee told me that he knows probably a thousand herbs but only uses 300 to 500 of them in his practice. I told Master Lee that I know probably 50 or so herbs and only use maybe 20 of them in my practice. And he gave me a thumbs up so I feel pretty encouraged about that. This morning I was excited to go to the hospital and see Master Lee in action. He had a busy patient schedule, probably 30 people in line waiting to see him, in an office full of other doctors, family members of the patients who were there. It was great to see Master Lee sitting at his desk, completely calm, completely focused on the patient that was in front of him. I was able to sit in and listen to his treatment plan for somebody that came in for a cough. Master Lee and I have very different diagnostic techniques. He only uses his fingertips as a way of assessing the pulse in several different areas of the body. And that was new for me. He actually checks the pulse in multiple places of the body, like the two places on the skull. I watched him very thoughtfully write down 16 different treatments. Master Lee, can you tell me what your diagnosis for that patient is? What did you learn by checking her pulse that helped you?
因为他有点烫。So what did you prescribe her? 鸡肝呀，清湖啊，都是是属于上行的药。这个鱼人草啊，要淡利滴大利滴，要都是免费喝汤的药。OK， 谢谢。Even though I've only known Master Lee for a couple days, there are some things that I can tell about him already. It's obvious that he really is passionate about teaching, and he's been really hands-on with me. And I was eager to talk to some of the people who have apprenticed with them to get their sense of what his teaching style is. They echoed some of my initial impressions. He has a very patient demeanor. He has a very selfless style that he teaches to the people around him. And I also learned from them that he really tailors his teaching style to each of them individually based upon strengths that he's able to notice in his students. One of the associate professors at the medical school was an apprentice of Master Li's from 1986 to 1989. He explained that it was really rigorous competition to get an opportunity to work with Master Li. 当时有八位学生参加王林轩硕士研究生的考试，嗯，我是唯一的幸运者。When asked about Master Li's teaching style, one of his apprentices said that she could summarize it in one sentence. 呃，李老师的工作作风可以用一句话来概括：待病人如待家人。So two areas where Master Li's students say that he really excels are in rheumatology and gynecology. I think it's pretty rare to find 83-year-olds still doing a lot of writing, contributing to the medical literature, and developing protocols that probably over the course of the next two or three years will become standards of care for Chinese medicine. He's really still pioneering research and pushing the envelope to help develop the future of traditional Chinese medicine. Today, Master Li invited me into his house. When I arrived there, I was surprised to see that he lives in a pretty old building in a small community of apartments, and there was really nothing that special about it. It was sort of a typical small neighborhood next to the hospital. There was some plants around. He actually lives on the fourth floor of his building, so he walks up and down those stairs every day, which I think probably gives him a, a good amount of exercise. If you were one of the most 30 highly revered doctors in America, I feel like you may live in a big house or have signs of success in your living space. Master Lee lives in a really modest surrounding. Looking at the family portraits in his house gave me a much clearer picture of the lineage of medicine that is in his family. He's got five children, four of them are physicians, and the other one is also in science. So among the family, there are actually seven professors. Anybody that you talk to about Master Li will mention his really balanced demeanor. He says that there are four keys to living a healthy life. The first one is exercise, and I had a chance to see him doing his meditative movements which he feels help him maintain internal harmony and keep his body healthy. The second key, he says, is to appreciate art and the beauty that lies within. His third secret to maintaining health is getting deeply connected to nature. There are specimens from nature all over the place. He really is surrounded by nature all the time. Master Lee says the fourth and most important secret to health is maintaining harmony in your life. In Western medicine, we see somebody catches an infection, for example, and then we just try to treat that infection. We use antibiotics to kill bacteria. We use antivirals to fight viruses. Chinese medicine has a completely different approach. The goal really is to support the body so that it can heal itself. There are various internal energies that need to be maintained in balance so that the body doesn't become susceptible to disease. It's a more supportive model that heals from a, a deeper level than just treating the symptoms.
Shook County is the gateway to the Yellow Mountains, and this is Master Lee's hometown and where he retreats from the city still. This is where his home is. It's in a really idyllic setting. When we were coming in here, I thought I would love to live in a place like this, surrounded by mountains, vegetables growing everywhere, beautiful valley floor. When we arrived at the house, my first impression was that there was so much detail everywhere I looked. One of the first places that I went to up there was a big open room that was right in the center of the house. And Master Lee explained to me that this is the meditation room. As we walked into his room, I was immediately amazed at this really old, huge poster frame bed. It was redwood, intricately hand carved all over the place. No actual metal nails or screws or anything holding it together. It was really sturdy. On one side, when you look out the window, there are just layers upon layers of mountains. I think it really speaks to his personality, how welcoming he has been to me and how much respect that he's actually given me. I don't feel like I'm necessarily a special guest, but uh, sitting down at the table and him toasting me with the finest liquor that he has in his house just really speaks to his generosity and warmth for everybody that comes into his life. I had a chance to talk to Master Lee's son, Lee Ting. Lee Ting explained to me some of the features about the Zhang Yitie lineage of Chinese medicine that make it unique. Zhang Yitie. Zhang Yitie, if it's translated into English, means strong, precise medicine that should cure the illness in one treatment. There's a pretty atypical structure to Zhang Yitie lineage being passed down. Master Li's wife's father was the 13th heir. Her brother died young. She began to study Chinese medicine at a young age. Her father saw that interest blooming and encouraged it. Master Li came as an apprentice to her father when he was 27 years old. And she was 22 at that time. She later married Master Li on one condition, and that condition was that their firstborn son would carry the last name of her family, Zhang. And the two of them are now the 14th cultural heirs of the Zhang Yitie lineage in Chinese medicine. On the walk from the new house to the old house, you go by the river where Master Li's wife's father lived. That house isn't there anymore because of flood but it's still an important historical site in the region. New day, new story. Spoke to his daughter, Li Yen, who I've spent some time with over the last few days. She did explain that she really gained a lot of influence from her mother but that kindness and that warmth that her patients experience from her, she said, that comes from my dad. She really idolizes her mother as well. So when she was young, she said she basically was on her mom's back. Her mother used to take her up to the mountain to, to collect medicines. Her mother can identify more than a thousand medicines when she's walking around in the mountains, actually. Master Li's wife, Jiang Xuan Hua is a really incredible woman. She spent a lot of time following her father around when she was younger because she just was very interested in medicine. She said that her father was impressed by Master Li's ability to always score very high on tests. However, she said that she often scored higher than he did. So sometimes he maybe got an 85 and she would get a 90. Initially, she said that she didn't actually like him that much, but as he started to stay around more studying with her father and studying alongside of her, the whole family came to like him more. But in fact, they came together as an arranged marriage. In those days, there really weren't any female doctors, so she had to work extra hard and also wasn't given any relief from the typical woman chores that were sort of the standard social structure in those days. Because of that, she earned the nickname Iron Lady and gained a lot of respect from people around her. When we were talking about her relationship with Master Lee, she pretty much said, 
well, you know, I stuck with him because of the family, and you know, it's arranged marriage, what can I do? <laughs> What's really fascinating is that this arranged marriage that is now 55 years deep has produced five successful, happy children, and Mrs. Lee can crack as many jokes as she wants to about how uh, she just stayed in it because of the family and that sort of thing. But I can tell when the two of them are together that there is you know, tremendous love between them. I was eager to learn some of uh, Master Lee's teachings about acupuncture specifically because we've had a lot of time to talk about herbal medicine and Chinese medicine theory. Master Li, with the assistance of Li Yen, showed me that by using your body as a measurement, this digit of your thumb can be draped over the skin right there to localize that point. And then he showed me how to go about inserting the needle with watching the response of the patient. That's a critical piece of knowing that you're doing acupuncture properly, getting the patient's reaction, because you can't feel that you're doing everything perfect just through your fingertips. And you're looking for the patient to describe that they feel some numbness or pain. One of the best things about today was that I actually had a personal consultation with Master Lee where I was the part of one of his patients. He's really a master of pulse diagnosis, which, like acupuncture, is an art that takes years to really perfect. While he was doing this, he asked me several questions some of them seemingly out of the blue, things I didn't open up and mention to him. So he said things like, you know, do you have pain in your joints? I do have pain in my joints, maybe more so than I would expect for somebody my age. But I didn't mention that to him. That's something that I'm just sort of used to. My joints pop all the time. He was able to detect that in my pulse, actually. So he told me that my kidney chi needed supporting. The kidney in the body in Chinese medicine is where the chi originates. Over the course of one's lifetime, their kidney chi actually slowly decreases. So one of the important concepts in Chinese medicine is to support the kidney chi because by doing that, the kidney meridian then will move the energy to wherever it needs to go. And then he made some kind of offhand pretty funny comments about how I need to have sexual practices only in moderation in order to prevent me from having worsening of my symptoms over the course of life. He told me that I need to avoid deep fried foods and sticky rice. I'm gonna follow his advice because he's the master. At the end of our consultation, he got out his prescription pad and wrote me a prescription very thoughtfully of what looks to be about 18 herbs his son actually has a pharmacy or dispensary, so the family's gonna gather my prescription all together, and tomorrow I'm gonna come back and pick it up so that I can start on this course of treatment that Master Lee recommended. So this is a pretty heavy prescription that he's given me. There are at least 15 herbs here. So he's teaching me about each one so that I can know what all of their functions are. With this prescription that Master Lee is giving me, I'm going to bring all this medicine back to the States and take this for however much time he recommends that I do. I also have the, the written out prescription that he gave me, so if I feel like I'm getting out of balance again, I'm going to ask him is this a treatment that I might go through again and I can just get my herbs filled in America. Today I was able to ask the man himself a lot of really personal questions to understand what makes him who he is. He explained that he grew up in a small village. One of his aunts died when she was really young. That sort of inspired him to be interested a little bit in the beginning. He also was surrounded by a lot of really poor people who didn't have resources. 
his intuition was to learn how to help them. So he's pretty quick to give credit to his wife for all of his success, actually. One of the topics that I most looked forward to talking to Master Lee about was where Western and Eastern medicine come together, because this is a passion of mine, integrative medicine. What can we learn from each other? He's still studying Western medicine because he feels like neither Chinese medicine or Western medicine has all the answers. The best approach is really a combined one. It's really fascinating to get his opinion about the public persona and how that's different from how he feels about himself. He's really the essence of humility, I think. He doesn't consider himself a master at all. In fact, he just described himself as an old nerdy guy who likes to study and will continue to, to do that until the day that he dies. I had no idea that I was going to be meeting a living master, somebody who would teach me so many lessons about how to live life, how to find compassion in everyday moments, and how to celebrate. I feel just being around him that I want to learn more, that I want to be more open to people who come to see me. I feel that I want to learn how to restore people's health in the same way that he does, not just treat their illnesses. He's a living example of the type of person and doctor that I want to be in my life. It's impossible to put into words what I learned from Master Lee. It doesn't have anything to do with anything he told me. It's really just the light that he exudes. I realize that as I'm watching the sunset here. He's like a third grandpa that I didn't have, or you know, the elder on the other side of the world that was here for me to learn from. So I've said my goodbye to him, and hopefully I'll get to see him in the flesh again. But for now, I'll walk with the light that he has put inside of me.